My name is Catherine Carstairs, and I teach in the Department of History. So why do people listen to Gwyneth Paltrow when it comes to food and health? Why do they listen to Jenny McCarthy when it comes to vaccines? This often drives experts in this, these fields nuts. There is certainly a wide body of nutritional research promoting a balanced diet over cleanses. Doctors know that vaccines will prevent many childhood diseases. So what is the appeal of these self-proclaimed experts with little background in the relevant sciences? To answer this question, I've turned to the past and to some of the food celebrities of the period immediately following World War II. So the first one I'll talk about is Gaylord Hauser. Hauser has been all but forgotten today, but in the middle decades of the 20th century, he was one of the best known writers on food, beauty, and health in both the United States and Europe. Hauser had no medical or scientific training. He briefly attended schools of naturopathy and chiropractic as a young man, but he quickly moved into a career of health lecturing and then health book authoring. His book, Look Younger, Live Longer, published in 1951, was on the New York Times bestseller list for over a year and was translated into more than a dozen languages. The book dramatically increased sales of um, uh, Hauser's so-called wonder foods, um, which included brewer's yeast, blackstrap molasses, powdered skim milk, yogurt, and wheat germ. Devoted fans could subscribe to his newsletter, watch him on television, buy Hauser endorsed food products, and follow him, in, follow him in the gossip columns where he was frequently linked romantically to Greta Garbo. The American Medical Association condemned him as a quack who hawked um, health and diet tips of dubious value, but his vision of life for aging women, who were his primary audience, was surprisingly full of possibility. Hauser coaxed women to travel, to open businesses, and to dance. He told them that by eating a diet rich in whole grains and vegetables, by taking long walks and enjoying the pleasures of life, they could live longer, healthier, and more fulfilling lives. He provided a distinct counterpoint to the commonly held view that aging would bring about new aches and pains, a loss of beauty, and feelings of worthlessness. At the same time, his work also created new expectations for women who were now supposed to be slim, attractive, and healthy into their older years. Now, Hauser was appealing, I think, because in part he provided so much promise to people, but also because he provided them with detailed roadmaps of how to get there. His books included diets and exercise regimes that gave people structures and rules, as well as the expectation of a better body, a better health, and a better life. Now, my second person I'll talk about, Adele Davis, is today much better remembered than Hauser. Although, like him, she wrote her books in the early 50s and 60s, they only gained widespread popularity in the 1970s when they were re-released in paperback. Now, Davis actually was a trained nutritionist who had a master's degree in biochemistry. And her books, including Let's Eat Right to Keep Fit and Let's Have Healthy Children, sold over 10 million copies. Davis told her readers that American soil was poor and that their food was overprocessed and badly cooked. She said that Americans were suffering from subclinical deficiencies of vitamins and minerals, making them exhausted, cranky, and prematurely old. Fortunately, she promised she could help. A careful diet of natural foods with extensive vitamin and mineral um, supplementation could restore Americans to health and beauty and ensure the strength of the nation. And here you see a very sort of strong emphasis on the Cold War, which was very much a part of her work. Davis connected with Americans who were becoming increasingly concerned about the safety of their food. The early 1970s, was a frightening time to be an eater in America. The media announced that artificial sweeteners caused bladder cancer, that there was mercury in fish, carcinogenic nitrates in hot dogs and other cured meats, antibiotics in animal feeds, and dangerous pesticides on fruits and vegetables. The Center for Science and the Public Interest warned that breakfast cereals were no more nutritious than the cardboard that they were packaged in. 
Davis was persuasive, I think, in part because she spoke the language of science. She frequently referred to large-scale studies in her work, and she often referenced well-known scientists and doctors. That said, her many critics in the medical and nutrition professions argued that her, work with her advice was inaccurate and potentially dangerous. The popularity of Adele Davis shows that while Americans were becoming increasingly concerned, um, and understandably so, about the changes that had occurred to their food supply, they still believed in the power of science. And it also shows that the idea that you could counteract these risks by carefully managing one's own diet, so i.e. in an individual response to these larger health risks, um, had incredible appeal. So what do we take from food celebrities in the period after World War II? I think these kinds of food celebrities will always be with us and will always influence how the general public thinks about food and health, and those sometimes will do this more accurately than others. The most important thing is for scientists and for other experts to counter the advice which is on occasion outright dangerous, um, and to try and better understand the appeal of some of these self-appointed experts in order to better package nutritional and health advice for public audiences.